Hello guys and welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I kind of look a bit crazy because I'm actually going to be testing out the original Beauty Blender up against my all-time favorite makeup sponge. Hence why there is no foundation and the acne has come out to play. So you're welcome. First off, I have to give a huge shout out to Melissa Page. We actually did a collab video like about a month or so ago. You can take a look at that video up over here. But Melissa actually organized for me to get this beauty blender while a family member or a friend was in the UK because this sponge is freaking expensive expensive here in South Africa. So that is why I wanted to do this video to basically see like is this really worth the money because in South Africa this stuff costs literally double the amount of what this goes for like in the USA and in the UK. So before I get started in this video I do want to say if you are new here make sure that you click that subscribe button down below and while you're at it tap that little bell notification right next door to it and you'll be notified every single time that I upload a video. So like I said I am going to be testing out the original beauty blender makeup sponge up against my all-time favorite literally ride or die makeup sponge and that makeup sponge is the Carla non latex makeup blending sponge I've been using this sponge for years it's from the drugstore it is so affordable it blends out your makeup beautifully I feel like this sponge does not soak up your makeup and I've just been really happy with it I've tried other makeup sponges and I always tend to go back to this one. So just to give you a price point to compare these two sponges, the Carla makeup sponge retails for about 80 rand, round about there. And in South Africa, this, this pink glorious thing that has had so much hype around it is it's kind of at like the 500 rand mark, so it is crazy expensive compared to this cheap yet amazing little guy right here. Now I did do a bit of research on the Beauty Blender makeup sponge because I wanted to see what made this sponge so special to other beauty sponges. And basically the information that I found is that this sponge has actually been designed to absorb water when it's wet. Now this sounds a bit stupid but hear me out. Most sponges because you are meant to wet these beauty sponges when you wet it it does get bigger and it does expand but apparently they don't soak up the water they just get bigger. Whereas the beauty blender it gets bigger and it retains that water and by the sponge retaining the water it's not going to soak up your foundation and therefore your foundation spreads further it's gonna last longer a little goes a lot more of a long way with the beauty blender I'm gonna keep quiet that's the information that I found out and I just want to jump into it and try this out because what else more do I need to say about this sponge everyone pretty much knows all about the beauty blender okay so immediately taking out these two sponges and just feeling them when they are dry I can definitely tell compared to the beauty blender how much more dense the sponge feels the color makeup blending sponge this feels kind of soft and squishy but we are meant to wet this you're not supposed to use these dry so let me wet these and see how they feel afterwards so right here now you can see after being wet how much it has expanded and grown it's not like a crazy amount huger but you can see that it has grown in size okay so there's the size of the beauty blender now and now I'm just gonna go ahead and wet it in some water now you can see the size of the beauty blender it's almost I'd say like doubled in size it is a lot bigger from when it was dry comparing the two you can definitely feel how much more soft after the beauty blender is like I always hear makeup artists and youtubers talk about how soft the sponge is in comparison to other makeup sponges and this was pretty much the softest sponge that I've ever tried but now where I compared the two the beauty blender is almost double the softness does that make sense it's a lot more softer and squishier than this sponge over here so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my Carla makeup sponge and use my everyday foundation that i always use which is this wet n wild photo focus foundation and i'm going to use the Carla makeup sponge on the left side of my face 
Okay, I'm now going to go right ahead and start blending this foundation out. The reason why I love using this Carla makeup sponge is because it's been easy. It was the first sponge that I ever tried and it didn't leave any like marks on my face. It just blended the foundation out so nice. Guys, I need to apologize about this this thing over here, this situation over here. My skin is freaking out by what's new. Okay guys, so that is the one half of my face done. That took literally maybe a minute and a half to blend out beautifully and perfectly and flawlessly. I love the sponge. Like I said, I use it all the time. But now the true test comes in with trying the beauty blender on this side of my face. Like, is this sponge really worth this amount of money? I'm gonna find out. So now I'm taking the sponge and again going to be putting on the exact same foundation on this one. By the way, do you guys use beauty blenders? Do you use makeup sponges? Or do you still like to use a makeup brush? Like what do you like to use? Or your fingers? Do you use your fingers? Who knows? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so I don't know if this is just me, but I am noticing this right off the bat. When I put the foundation on here, it's almost like I can see the foundation sinking into the sponge. I thought this thing wasn't meant to absorb makeup, but when I put my makeup on this sponge over here, my Everyday Color Beauty Blender sponge, when I put the foundation on top, it just sits on the makeup sponge. It doesn't like start getting sucked in by the sponge. And that's just something that I am noticing immediately. Okay, now I'm gonna start blending out the foundation on this side of my face with the Beauty Blender. Okay, this is a lot softer on the face. I like the feeling. It has like a really nice bounce to it. With the other sponge, I feel like when it's new and out the box, it is a little bit hard. I can actually feel how much harder it is on my face compared to this. This feels really soft and squishy and bouncy and actually very comfortable to use on the skin. Okay, so that is that side of my face done and let me share with you what I think. So number one, it was definitely a lot faster to blend out my foundation if it took me about a minute and a half to do this side of my face. This side of my face maybe took 40 seconds to blend everything out. I did notice that it blended out my makeup a lot faster. Also, when I was blending it in, it did look a bit more airbrushed. I was quite impressed with that. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, I thought a, a sponge is a sponge, you know. How's it going to change the way that my foundation looks? But it definitely gives a lot more of a smoother airbrushed finish. I don't know. That's, that's just me when I'm looking in the mirror. It didn't really soak up any of my foundation. I thought that that is the impression that I was getting when I first put the makeup on the sponge but when I was working it in my face it definitely didn't absorb any products and if anything I do feel that it spread the foundation a little bit more on my face I didn't have to use any more product than what I usually do so I'm quite impressed so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish off the rest of my face. I'm actually going to use the Beauty Blender to set my face with some powder. And I'm going to really think about it and give you my thoughts on this sponge. Okay, now that I'm finished my face, let me talk about how I feel the Beauty Blender sponge did when applying powder. I feel that it applied my powder very nicely, very evenly, very flawlessly. Sometimes with other makeup sponges, when you apply the powder on your face, sometimes it gets a little bit cakey in one area and maybe a bit more powder in certain areas. So that is one little thing that is nice about this is I do feel that it applied the powder beautifully beautifully on my face. Now let me talk about what I actually think. Like does it live up to the hype? Would I get this again for myself? Number one, it definitely does live up to the hype. It's a beautiful sponge. It feels very comfortable on the face. It blends out your makeup beautifully and evenly and flawlessly. It just, it ticks all the boxes. It really does. But having said that, this sponge cost 500 Rand, maybe 450 if you're lucky. Okay, so so just think about that. 450 to 500 rand. This one over here is 80 rand. 80 rand, guys. 80. 
Besides the fact that this sponge over here takes a couple of more seconds to blend out your makeup than this one doesn't really bother me at all. Also, this sort of here just feels a little bit more comfortable when you're bouncing it up against your skin. But to be honest, after a couple of uses, this one feels exactly like this one. So do I think, do I honestly think that this is worth the money? Oh honey, no, not, not for that price point. No. 500 Rand for this. I don't feel that it is worth that much of the hype. Don't get me wrong. It's a beautiful sponge. It really is beautiful. It works really well, but I'm not spending that amount of money again on this. To be, it's just my honest opinion, guys. You can disagree with me. If you, if you feel otherwise, let me know in the comments. I really love to get your opinion on certain things, but I just feel like for 500 Rand, oh hell no. Hell no, not for 500 Rand. 500 Rand? 80 Rand. 500 Rand? 80 Rand. Like, which one? <laughs> which one would you choose, guys? Also, another thing, if you think about it, three, four months down the line, they both are going to have to be chucked away. They both going to get moldy and nasty and broken and torn. So, it's not like I'm paying 500 Rand and this is going to last me like two years. Then that's an investment. If you can guarantee me that this sponge is going to last me that long of a time, then okay. Then I see the value. But sponges don't really last very long. They last for a couple of months and especially for me and my skin having the acne, it's not a good idea to keep sponges for very long periods of time because it is just a breeding ground for bacteria and I'm spreading that bacteria all over my face. So, it's a no-no trying to keep any sponge for a very long time in my makeup kit. I do have to say though, if you are a professional, if you do makeup on clients and you really want to give them the best and you have lots of clients and you're in a hurry and you want to save yourself a couple of seconds blending out someone's contour, concealer and whatever, then this would be great. This would be great to use. I'm not saying that it's not great. I'm just saying like if you're a professional and you want it, go get it. But I feel like for me that does makeup in the morning and makeup for fun, I'm going to stick to my 80 Rand sponge. So I know this video just went up like this and ended like that, but <laughs> let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Have you tried an original beauty blender sponge before? What is your favorite go-to beauty makeup sponge that you use on your face? What do you think? Like, what do you think what I had to say? Like, I want to get your opinion. Anyway, guys, that is it. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure that you leave this video a big thumbs up. But until next time, bye.